so we'll be covering uh, we'll be covering the eighth newspaper today folks and then we'll move on to uh, tomorrow we'll move on to ninth and may on saturday we'll cover the other ones so let us open the fourth uh, the third page of the newspaper there are few articles per page parliament uh, center get con gets control over the over delhi via lg parliament stamps uh, its approval to the bill so this is this is something that you should know but what this also does is ideally so you are changing the federal principle so you should know how to amend the constitution as well so uh, uh, so amending the constitution in fact uh, you have uh, rajya sabha mp gogoi uh, questions who questions the basic structure so he was he was, a, he was the supreme court chief justice and that also shows how and and why there should be some kind of a, uh, i mean i mean there, there should be some kind of a film or some kind of a restriction on on uh, judges to join politics so uh, this is another issue that is that has been uh, that has been cropping up this is another issue that has been cropping up with respect to uh, indian indian uh, governance that judges have started taking and people have started taking post retirement benefits and these post retirement benefits are basically influencing their pre retirement work so for example someone who was was willing to join bjp after uh, after uh, the meeting office uh, must have done something could have done something which which is in favor of the party so this is this is something which points to issues and and uh, uh does it violate this does this violate the basic structure if it does then it will be uh, removed so amendment to the constitution you should be aware about the what what are the different ways of amending the constitution then uh the other article is uh, supreme court in the manipur issue has as as uh, as appointed a probe uh, monitor and a panel of ex uh, judges so you have this uh, three panel of ex judges to look into relief and rehabilitation uh, justice geeta mittal uh, justice shalini joshi and justice asha menon so uh, they will be looking into they will be looking into how and what were what were the relief measures and uh, what what went wrong and rehabilitation of of the female folk and then uh, you have the um, maharashtra police the former ips officer uh, dattare uh padsal kicker uh, he will he will be uh, overall monitoring the cbi probe so cbi it will not be taking away from from cbi but he will be monitoring what cbi is doing in this particular matter now this is an example of judicial intervention uh and and judicial uh, uh intervention in, in the domain of uh, executive so this is a very good example that you can use uh, another ethics another ethics for ethics you can use this example in a uh, 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 you do you do, I mean demolition that that we are seeing in Haryana is for a particular community. So this is what the Delhi High Court has said, and this is another question that uh, that has been asked to a lot of aspirants during their interviews. So uh, what this what this says is that uh, uh, there there has only been one community which is the Muslim community which has been targeted. Uh, under this demolition right and if that is the case if there is no due procedure uh, no legal backing to it then they should be completely stopped so this is again uh, judicial intervention and this is something that you can you can bulldozer culture uh, working without due approval uh, targeting a particular community something that you can uh, uh, now a very very important a very very important news for you why is it important because this becomes part of your development industry if you see your syllabus in your paper number 2 governance there is there is this word governance industry and and uh, pressure groups as well as as well as ngos voluntary organizations now this is this is an example where bjp and the government has cited that a new york times report which says that uh, uh, that that there is this uh, there is this website called as news kick now news click uh, it is it has been alleged by new york times that its owner is is a beneficiary and is a sympathizer of communist party of china and this particular owner and and and, and the promoter who is those who has other companies as well and the investors in news click they are related directly related to Com- communist party of china and their work is to basically uh, 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 i mean i mean spread false rumors in india And and promote the Chinese, uh, whatever 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 the Chinese 
prerogative is or whatever the Chinese uh, uh, idea or ideology is, they want to promote that. And, and they, they, it's basically an anti-India uh, court that, that they're setting up. So this is, this is what the article is. Uh, very very important article folks why because this is an ex this will give you an example into how development industry so not all NGOs are, are beneficial for you not all voluntary groups are beneficial for you you have to see the funding of these beneficial groups so there is something called as FCRA if you remember we, we have talked about Center for Policy Research Center for Policy Research has recently been stopped the F, uh, has been, has been uh, taken their, their tax exemption status has been taken away if you remember this and also also they have not been they have been denied the fcra uh, money so so uh, what has happened is every five years these ngos has to show that why should their license be renewed and uh, whether they are eligible for foreign funding or not now similarly here as well uh, the the issue has been that the funding the foreign funding that has been that has been a news channel has been getting is for anti-India act, which goes against the development industry. So this is uh, uh, there is a, there is an expansion of this particular article uh, on page number seven, where New York Times reports the U.S.-based pro-China network funded by funded Indian website. Again, you can read this. Page number eleven, folks. Substandard, unsafe. Uh, WHO now flags alert on India made syrup sold in Iraq. Now we already know about the GMP practices, good manufacturing practices, which the government of India is asking all the pharmaceutical industry to adopt within six months if your turnover is more than 250 crores and within one year if it's less than that. Only 20%. These are numbers, folks, that you need to know. Only 20% of, of the Indian pharmaceutical industry is compliant with the GMP uh, procedures. And we found deaths in, in uh, Gambia. In, in uh, I think uh, there's another country, Cameroon was the one. Uh, our eye drops were found to be contaminated in Sri Lanka. Uh, some of the Pacific Islands were also, Marshall Islands were, or, or, and Solomon Islands were also reported to have contaminated uh, uh, this thing, uh, your, your syrups. And this is something which is very important, both from ethics point of view and from the point of view from our industry, uh, because we are called as the pharmacy of the world. And now uh, these two contaminants, which is di di dilene glycol and ethylene glycol, which are found to be in, in uh, and you can also remember these couple of these companies. I think Mericom Pharmaceuticals was one and the other one also started with them. You can remember these names and if you remember these names, the good thing is you are giving a context while, while starting your answer. So uh, now... Uh, uh, Pharmaceutical cold uh, uh, syrup cold out uh, manufactured by this Chennai Forts uh, Forts Laboratories was was found that there these two DGs and EG was found to be at 0.25 and 2.1 percent uh, instead of the permissible limit of 0. Point. And what happens especially in case of children is that it leads to vomiting, diarrhea, a headache, uh, uh, altered mental mental stat status inability to pass urine and ultimately kidney failure and this kidney failure leads to death so this is something that has been highlighted in iraq also now <clears throat> let's come to the editorial page which we could pick. now one article uh, a little political but again uh, because it uh, leads to representation of people's act which is part of your syllabus in paper number two as well as application in paper number four now, Representation of People Act basically says that someone who is convicted for two years or more uh, will, will stand to be suspended from, uh, from, from elections. Now, because the Supreme Court of India has, has uh, stayed the conviction of Rahul Gandhi, he's come back to the parliament. And the other issue is the sense of proportionality. The, the offense should also be proportional to uh, the, the, the conviction or, or the punishment should also be proportional to the just because just because it is uh, it is permissible you don't give, you don't have to give the maximum punishment and that is what the court has ruled that is what the supreme court has said that what was the reason for assigning the maximum punishment was there enough to, and you also need to identify that it also affects the right of the electorate this is a very important line that you should write this is uh, this affects the right of the electorate who have elected him to represent his constituency so this is something which is very very important for you to understand. Um, and the other thing that the article says is that you have this violence in Manipur and Haryana 
as well as uh, the Delhi Services Bill, uh, which makes the LG as the super CM. The other big article. Uh, before before we start, I want to show you this again. Quotations, folks. Please make sure that you are writing these quotations. Martin uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness. So so uh, I mean something which respect to Indian politics as well. Uh, that that uh, we 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 should not we should not just because we have we have all the uh, this thing uh, all all the all the seats in the parliament that that doesn't mean that uh, we should we should have bitter relations with others. So uh, a very very good uh, a very good uh, quotation that you can use wherever there is uh, wherever there is no harmony in in societal relations. So uh, make use of this. Now uh, this is this article by Sajid Chinnoy, who is also a part-time member of the Prime Minister Advisory Council, as well as he is the Chief Economist of uh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, now, uh, if you, if you read this article, it it talks about the Great Unraveling. Now, um, it's it's a little technical article. If you don't understand the the mechanism behind it, it's okay. Uh, but let, let let's let me try to unravel this this, this unraveling. Now. What this article says is that in the in 2008 we had this global financial crisis. Now in this global financial crisis, uh, uh, the the entire world had suffered because because these advanced countries, especially U.S. and European countries, had got through the crisis and that that had an impact on the entire world. And the output of the entire world had reduced and then it took us many many years to revive. From 2008 till 2014-15, the world was reeling under the impact of the global financial crisis now now uh, what has happened what has happened is that after this globalization what had happened with globalization is that all these blue collar jobs have shifted to china now what we are saying is that with the ai revolution with the advent of open ai with the advent of bard even the blue collar jobs are supposed to, uh, might also go and there is there is this famous quotation now being quoted everywhere that it is by Elon Musk who says that it is not an AI which will replace you in your in your in your workplace. It is a person who will be using AI uh, who will replace you. So that's why I have been I have been forcing all of you that please be a smart student. Have a personal. All of you are most of you are investing in coaching. I would say that in more than a coaching, invest yourself in Bard, invest yourself in uh, Chat GPT. It's it's completely revolutionary uh, in terms of its working. And uh, maybe maybe on one session, maybe on Saturday, I can use prompts and, and how to use. Chat. I use it very very extensively in the these days uh, for anything that I have to do. So it's 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 going to replace and, and in my opinion, it's going to replace everything. Uh, uh, the, the the advancement that that they are doing with uh, GPT 4.0. Now, what has happened is if you if you see the if you see the second paragraph that uh, what had happened is that the structural fiscal def uh, uh, deficit basically uh, what the uh, what the advanced economies did was that after the after the global crisis they all started reducing their fiscal deficits and and uh, and between two thousand seven and two thousand seventeen. All of them were, were basically starting to tighten their fiscal deficit. Spending a lot, they were having huge amounts of debts. They started reducing their debts and they started spending less. So this is something that they did and because of this, their economies, most of their economies, whether, whether in Europe or in US, their economies <coughs> started stagnating. Now, at the same point of time, uh, their, their monetary policy, their monetary policy was still loose. So think of the, there are two things. One is one is a fiscal policy and a monetary policy. On and they need to go in tandem with each other. So on, on one end you are saying you are not going to spend much. You are going to reduce your deficits. On the other end you have a ultra loose monetary policy where you are keeping interest rates low and the amount of money that you are going to pump into the market is going to increase. These two things, a, a, a contractionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy, are counteracting with each other. They're count. They're actually opposite to each other, and that is what uh, what 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 was happen what was happening in in case of um, uh, between 2017 between 2008 till 2020 maybe till 2018 19 they were doing this. 
and what this did was that see if the interest rates in the market uh, are too low what happens is that even if i am not profitable suppose suppose um, i am not I, I don't have a profitable business some someone like bijus uh, see what what happened with them during covid time uh, because there was excess money rolling around with with all these billionaires there was excess money in the market what they did was they didn't care about profitability all they did all they did care about is valuation they started acquiring different different companies they started acquiring companies in us they started acquiring companies in india at unreasonable prices white hat junior great learning and they went on this shopping spree just to capture the entire market and what uh, and, and, and essentially they did not care about the bottom line they, and, and they did not care about the efficiency so when you have ultra low interest rates in the market you don't take efficient decision you don't you don't really consider the value for your money and that has what uh, what has led to the demise or, or, or similarly when you have ultra low interest rates there are zombie firms which is firms which should ideally die if the interest rates are high they will not be able to pay it they will go for bankruptcy and they will die uh, what ultra low monetary policy does is that it does not uh, lead to that creative destruction there is this, this word called as veil of creative destruction it was given by an economist by the name of schumpeter some of you will have political economy uh, in, uh, uh, later on so we will we'll understand this word a uh, veil of creative economic uh, destruction where new firms will destroy old structures so um, uh, so this is this is uh, this is where this is where um, uh, this is very important that interest had led to proliferation of these zombie firms and inefficiencies in the economy now um, apart from that apart from that uh, after 2008 uh, yeah here it says that the fiscal policy from from 2008 onwards had, had gone from being counter cyclical to counter productive and and what had happened because of covid was that after covid everyone started spending again so you have ultra low monetary policy and now you have been backing it up with what you are backing it up with ultra ultra loose fiscal policy as well now you spent too much of money into the market apart from that you started becoming too regional so you have this inflation you have this inflation reduction act which talks about this is muscular uh, industrial policy now very good example of muscular industrial policy what what is muscular industrial policy it basically says that industrial policy by force you are saying firms no you will produce in my domestic country as well for example licensing of laptops in case of remember that article uh, licensing of laptops in case of india then a pli scheme production linked incentives you have to come to india and produce then third is this inflation reduction act in case of us chips act all of this and then you have this this remember you did have uh, what was the name of that carbon emission act of of europe all of them is basically showing that everyone is looking inwards everyone is saying Uh, I don't want. I don't want a globalized world. I want to look inwards. So, the protectionism has increased, and what it has led to, it has led to demonstration of it. So, because we are seeing some large economies practicing it, even the smaller economies have started practicing it. Like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Europe have all responded with their own policies, which is called as, uh, which can be called as beggar thy neighbor. People from economics will understand this. We we read it in macroeconomics. that better uh, better thy neighbor which basically means it's a zero sum game i will only win if my neighbor loses i'm going to profit out of his misery this is called as better thy neighbor it is typically talked in terms of devaluation that i will devalue my currency i'll make it even cheap so that my exports increase and the imports of my neighbor increases so this is this is also called as better thy neighbor policy and now apart from that you are you have you, uh, you also have muscular industrial policy that succeeds in reshoring and friendshoring uh, you have economic balkanization that is happening and this is what has been called as this deglobalization uh, of sorts that is happening throughout the world is is what we call as the great unraveling and now we are talking about the chat gpt and, and how it's going to take away all the white collar jobs and then what we need to do for increasing globalization a very very important article very very reflective article you hardly find and uh, sajid writes really really well folks whenever you find time to see his article you should read it uh, writes a very logical very uh, intuitive then there's another article on the next page copy paste uh, conservation 
if you want a summary of it you can you can uh, you, you can read the summary of it uh, i'm not dealing with 270 we 370 i've been dealing with this a lot so uh, but if you want to read 370 uh this is this is a decent article now copy paste conservation is basically talking about uh, a repost to the article that was there in the newspapers by yv jhala and and uh, in uh, incidentally it was mr jhala who said that we can have a viable population of approximately 100 cheetahs in india but in his newer article he says that we need a meta population what does this meta population mean it means that the area that these cheetahs require is much much larger than the area that we have so what we want to do for genetic diversity is that you want to take these cheetahs after every every few uh, months and then relocate them to a different uh, region so that it mimics the uh, the, the uh, idea that the area that uh, that they are working in the ecosystem that they are working in is larger so this meta population strategy was not there earlier earlier it was being said that you have enough Uh, uh you have enough enough uh, resources uh, to sustain 100 cheetahs now you are saying you can you can have only 50 so uh, which is called as population viable analysis then uh, the other thing that is there is uh, that is questionable is that uh, on what basis did we did we have introduced cheetah we we introduced on the basis of how many cheetahs which is one of the praise of cheetah uh, do we have and it is found that the number of cheetahs to support a huge population of cheetah is not available So this is a very good counter uh, article to to India's Project Cheetah. Project Cheetah is something that I'm expecting a question definitely this year means, uh, or in something in prelim for for you guys. So make sure that you know Project Cheetah in and out. You know all about the Cheetah uh, program, uh, and and also also uh, uh, about about tigers. Uh, we will talk about tigers some other time. Yes. Last Havana syndrome. You can just read Havana syndrome. What Havana? It said that it's a microwave weapon which affects diplomats. Uh, they feel nauseous. They feel they they feel uh, tired and then they vomit. And this has happened with a number of uh, agents uh, uh, in 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 the foreign. So you can read about it. But two important things. What data protection bill says on privacy? Very important article. Now, if you read this particular article, it says that the DPDP, the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, has been passed, and it basically says any instrumentality. Now you need to know this bill inside out, folks. Any instrumentality of the state uh, is uh, is exempted from adverse consequences, citing national security, relations with foreign governments, maintenance of public order, among other things. Then, apart from that. Uh, it also says that uh, the bill states that if an entity is penalized more than twice, the center after hearing the entity can decide to block their platform in the country. So suppose suppose Twitter is not listening to India, they can they can they can block Twitter in India uh, after after this. So this could add to online censor censorship uh, regime existing under which is still existing under A of the IT Act. Then apart from that, the we all we already know this data protection board, which which will hear the data uh, is still retained, and the government will have complete control over this board, and the 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 decisions of the board will be uh, will be uh, adjudicated by the tel uh, the TDSAT, the Telecom Dispute Settlement and Appellate Tribunal, then um, national security and stuff. Private firms have been afforded to privilege. Uh, If, uh, concerns over RTI, so we we harmonize RTI with respect to this as well, and relief for the industry because we know what has happened with respect to children. Now instead of deemed consent, we we have this parental consent uh, consent now, and then you also have instead of white listing, we have black listing that the data sharing in these black listed countries will not be allowed. All other countries are white listed. And yeah, that's that's it. And you have some data, significant data fiduciaries, uh, which will uh, which will uh, use which will use data very carefully. So uh, critical analysis of this bill is required. Then the most important article of the day is hardening of the tree. Now what is what is happening is is that from 2016 onwards till 2023. What we are we are moving towards this when we are saying this Atmanirbhar Tha, 
we are basically going against opening up of from 2016 onwards till now we've been increasing our custom duty we've been increasing tariffs uh, we are going against this in, uh, and ho in the hope in the hope that people will not shore from outside people will not uh, buy from outside and these companies will be forced to uh, produce uh, goods in India we, we PLI scheme of raising custom duties uh, recent example is licensing that they've introduced in laptops from November 1 and you are coming back to this license permit Raj this was this is this is what was leaking uh, in, in the Indian uh, economy before 1991 which was called as license permit Raj where you had licenses you had this no, no you had to take permissions and and you had high tariff rates which is called as uh, one of one of these uh, tariff rates is called as uh, peak customs duty so peak customs duty is the highest normal tariff rate on non agricultural products uh, which has reduced from 150 percent so something which was costing you 100 rupees uh, from uh, in imports in 1991 was actually costing india 250 rupees so 100 rupees you were importing and because there was 150 percent tax on it you were you were selling in india at 250 rupees now this had reduced to 10 percent by 2007 2008 so that 100 rupee import was now costing 110 rupees in the market now we have increased this uh, uh, to, to 30 percent and then 14.3 percent and and uh, and this has been continuously increasing increase and the number of tariff percentage lines uh, uh, which, which has 0 to 10 percent has declined from 79 percent to 67 percent so all of this all of this is basically showing that india is uh, is reducing its uh, its openness india is move, moving inwards uh, india is um, um, going in, in when we are saying atmanirbhar india is making itself recluse uh, in, in international trade and we are moving in, in, in international economics you will you will read something called as autarky uh, and you will see gains from trade so gains from trade are maximum according according to trade theories gains from trade is maximum when you are free and open trade but what we are doing is we are not making trade free and open. We are restricting it. We are moving to back towards autarky, which is called as uh, one country world. So, so this is what we have been doing, and these bond rates have been increasing. Now you can read this article that why we have been increasing this and how we have been. So that's it, folks. Uh, there's nothing really more. In it. So this is about it, folks, from my side. Uh, we will meet tomorrow morning again at around 5 a.m exact time today unfortunately i did not give you the time uh but but tomorrow i'll, I'll inform you about the time beforehand and uh, then we will uh, meet on saturday as well because we have to discover and we have to cover for us thank you very much folks i'll see you tomorrow at 7